healthcare, emergency medicine, and medical operations, besides killing. When you go to war, your job is to kill. You got in the TVs today, you see everybody, and all these kids are all excited. Well, I'm going to war, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and rah, rah, rah. And they don't understand that they're going to kill or they're going to die. Gulf War I is the most toxic war known to man. The weapon systems that we use have gone beyond all ability for us to clean up the environment and to provide medical care. Reality of war is you kill or you die. And in most cases, you kill and you die. In Gulf War I, we made a conscious decision in December of 1990 at the Theater Command Headquarters that we would deliberately and willfully blow up the chemical and biological stockpiles that Iraq possessed and his nuclear reactors in place. Now everybody says, how did we know where he had them? Because the United States gave it to him. Throughout the 80s, we deliberately and willfully gave Iraq its chemical and biological stockpiles and helped them build the nuclear reactors. That's the subject of the Regal Commission report that James Toot wrote for the United States Senate. And we made a made-for-TV movie called Thanks of a Grateful Nation. Reality is. I got an email the other day and they said, well, how does President Bush know what chemical and biological stockpiles and nuclear stockpiles Iraq has? He kept the receipt. <laughs> it's that easy. So we made a conscious decision to blow all this stuff up in December of 1990. Now, if you can go into Schwarzkopf's autobiography, it doesn't take a hero, and it's on page 390. It's right there. Schwarzkopf acknowledges it in this thing. We did this decision. Now, we made that decision because if we blew them up in place where they were, Iraq didn't have the opportunity to throw them directly on us. So we blew them up in place. And now this is like taking an ice cube and hitting it with a hammer. All it's going to do is spread all over the place. Bunch. Go out here in a, you know, to the power plants over here in the other day, the refinery, okay, over on 52. And you can see how the clouds right now are spreading all over the place. Well, the same thing happens. Burn wood in your fireplace. Smell the wood smoke for blocks around, right? It's the same thing that happened. So all this stuff zapped everybody. A deliberate decision to blow up extremely dangerous munitions that we provided him in order that he would not release them back on us. But guess who released them back on us? We did. And we released them on the entire environment over there, and all of the men, the women, and children, all of the coalition military forces, and all of the Iraqi military forces, everybody over there completely. Then we made a conscious decision, just like in any military, in any city, you've got hazardous materials all over the place. And we used these things, and it got spread all over the place. And people started getting sick. And then we had this threat because, again, we provided him with the anthrax. You have to understand, the United States gave Iraq the anthrax that they produced, that we were going to take the shots the anthrax vaccine. But the only problem was we didn't have enough active vaccine. So we made a conscious decision to replace the adjuvant. This is the component of vaccine that prepares a site for the antibody to develop when you get shot in the arm, okay? And we replaced alum with squalene. Now squalene tears up the immune system. And everybody started getting sick. And then we made a conscious decision because, again, the United States provided Iraq with the materials that we would have to issue proteostigmine and bromide. These are the PB pills. These are NAP tablets. I see the military personnel in the audience shaking their head because they've eaten these things or seen them before. Now, the NAP pills or the proteostigmine and bromide, make it a real simple, ladies and gentlemen, it's gumdrops sprayed with black flag. You understand this? It's gumdrops doused in black flag array. So what you're doing is you're just eating this stuff. Now everybody started getting sick. I wonder why. If you eat pesticides, you're going to get sick. This doesn't take very smart. You know, you know what's going to happen. 
Well, now we have all this stuff happening. We got the people eating proteostigmine bromide. They're getting sick already. It's in the medical literature. Over 50% went down sick right away. Now we got all this stuff we blew up coming back on everybody. <laughs> and guess what? We decided that in order to make life safe for us, we were going to use pesticides. You know the Orkin man? Okay. The desert is absolutely filthy. The structures we were in were absolutely filthy. And in order to make them safe, you had to use pesticides to kill all the bugs and everything else, and germs and everything else. We left Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, where our unit was uh, activated. We were the theater public health department. We were in charge of all of this. We ordered pesticides that fulfilled the EPA regulations on pesticides. But in war, what is your job? To kill or you die. Your job is to kill. So they're shipping over what we call beans, blood, and bullets. You need beans to eat, you need blood to survive, and you need bullets to kill. It's that simple. And so the pesticides that we ordered, we didn't get. So the guys went on the open market and bought pesticides on the open market all over the region. Now, I guess how many of these things fulfilled EPA requirements? We don't even know what they were. And they sprayed them all over. So now everybody's getting sick. So we're doing a real good job already of getting everybody sick.